GM, GM, just a quick one before we get going. So as you know, the Blockmates podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Certainly shouldn't be considered as financial advice. We have absolutely no idea what we're talking about half the time. So any investment decision you do make should be based on your own research and your own understanding of the risks involved. One more thing as well, there's around 50% of people who listen regularly who aren't subscribed yet. So if you please could just do us a favor and hit the subscribe or the follow button or the like button. Helps content grow, helps us grow, helps it reach more people like yourselves um, and it mean the world to us as well. So that's the last I'll uh, ask of you. So yeah, let's get to the episode. So welcome back to the channel. In this one, we're taking a look at Celestia, the first modular blockchain network and seeing how this is at the forefront of the next evolution in blockchain scaling. As you can see here, they have a lofty ambition of one gigabyte block size, one billion light nodes running and one million rollups to be deployed. So let's dive in to see how they achieve this. If you're new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe here today and we'll jump on in. So on screen here, we have Mustafa Al-Bassam. So he is the CEO and founder of Celestia and he has a very cool backstory, which really adds to the lore of Celestia as a chain. So previously, Mustafa co-founded a hacker group called Lulz Sec and was also affiliated with Anonymous, the rather infamous online hacktivist group. His claim to fame was taking down the CIA website aged just 16. And for that offense, he received 320 hours of unpaid community service. And due to his age, you know, just being 16, he did avoid a custodial sentence. Further to this, he also developed Chainspace, which was acquired in 2019 by Facebook. So the founder of the chain is an absolute gigabrain, former hacktivist. And so I'm sure the crypto bros out there appreciate that story as we dive into Celestia. So to get into the swing of things around what Celestia does and a kind of analogy of how it operates that is quite easy to get your head around, we're gonna dive into the Blockmates article here that was written up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. These kind of breakdowns are happening pretty much every single day to help you sink your teeth into the latest updates and happenings in the crypto space. So the story here, it's 2023. However, we have a 2013 laptop and it is seriously lagging due to all the files stored on top of it. Frustration mounts, we're gonna throw the thing out of the window. And maybe you're thinking the easy outcome here is why not just delete all the files? However, these are files that can't be easily discarded. Hence, think about blockchain here. Then comes along Dropbox. So imagine you can now safely store all your files and conveniently access them without hassle and this frees up space on your laptop and it starts working again. You're clicking buttons, it's actually responding due to the fact the files are no longer stored directly on the laptop. They're stored off of it on Dropbox. So this should get you into the mental model for the quite technical stuff we're about to delve into around how Celestia works for blockchains. So on screen here, we have a diagram showing you Celestia and the kind of architecture and the stack being built here. So at the base layer here, we have the data availability and consensus provided by Celestia. On top of that, we have execution layers. So these are execution environments, maybe EVM or even Solana virtual machine or others. And then on top of that, again, we have smart contracts. So the belief of Mustafa, the creator of Celestia, was that the layer one should not be doing the computation and execution. His thesis is that a chain should be lazy and you just dump arbitrary data into it. He sees a blockchain as just a proof of publication system. So what Celestia does is actually pulls apart the execution from the consensus and data availability. As you can see, execution layers are here and then underneath on the base, we have data availability and consensus from Celestia. So in this example, an app will post its data to Celestia. So this will be its transactions and its blocks. Celestia will then order those and achieve a consensus. But then the execution takes place on the rollup chain. So that would be the execution layer from this diagram. The execution does not take place on Celestia. So maybe this is better visualized by the monolithic versus modular debate here, which you can see some of the pros and cons of. So a blockchain stack contains four key elements, execution, settlement, consensus, and data availability. A blockchain such as Bitcoin, ETH, or Solana would be on the left-hand side here, and they carry out all of these tasks in the single layer. So this means that when a transaction takes place, the blockchain has to execute the transaction, settle it, 
reach a consensus around it, and then ensure data availability all within that one layer. But as you can see from the right-hand side, the modular stack here focuses on specific tasks. At the bottom, we have DA, which is data availability and consensus. This is the core functionality of Celestia. We have then the settlement layer and an execution layer as well. So different types of environments. I'd like to point out that this is kind of like the analogy of having a Henry Ford production line on the right-hand side, whereas on the left, we have a bit of a jack of all trades. Some of the traits you'll see with the monolithic approach is the fact they're typically quite slow. Hardware costs for actually running the nodes and the validators are really high. This causes issues around centralization as a result. And these chains have a limited bandwidth. There's just so much data on top of them that it takes a long time to reach finality. Finality for ETH is around 12 minutes and it's just 15 seconds on Celestia. This also points out that the monolithic approach is more about maximalism, whereas the modular approach is around collaboration and tapping into the existing modular blockchains. Now, along with this monolithic versus modular debate, there's also some security issues as well. So if you just think about how many proof of work networks could there possibly be with finite compute resources, as for every new proof of work network that gets spun up, this means that some of the security that could be going to these other networks gets reduced. They're all fighting for the same resources, but within the modular architecture here, they all have equal security. So with Celestia, all the chains that deploy to it can share the same validator set. Therefore, we don't get the security fragmentation that we could see with other proof of work networks or other types of networks as well. So therefore you can see that modularity actually reduces security costs for chains. So what you can get with this modular approach is these blockchain stacks where you just take the best pieces from one another. So for example, you might have the execution environments of Solana due to its speed. You could then use the consensus and data availability of Celestia as this is highly cost efficient and reduces your fees. And then you have the settlement layer as Ethereum as you see that as the key area to be settling all of the value. All in all, this will give developers access to picking and choosing those different parts to build out these app chains that are specific to various functions. If you want a gaming chain, maybe you're gonna not need so much security, but you want that fast transaction speed and fast time to finality. So modular, in my mind, think more use cases and many more rollups. So we can start to see some of the benefits of a modular stack rather than using a monolithic. And we know that Celestia prides itself on its DA, its data availability and consensus. But what is data availability and what does it mean? Well, the real killer use case of Celestia is the fact that its DA is super cheap. And so this will mean low fees. On the surface, data availability may seem to you that it's just around storage in a decentralized manner, but it is more than that. So as the article points out, the primary concern is validating and securing the data submitted to the blockchain whilst ensuring its integrity and guarding against malicious activities. Therefore, data availability focuses on both the accessibility of data by all the nodes in the network and providing proof of integrity of that data. So the quicker a network can do this means the quicker it gets to finality. As we saw earlier, 12 minutes, the finality time of ETH, on Celestia, just 15 seconds. Now, when we look at the scaling solutions across the landscape here, think L2s and rollups. Commonly right now, what they're doing is something called data availability committees. Now, these are committees of nodes that verify and validate transactions. But if you think about it, there's centralization issues around that. A small validator set could collude together to act maliciously. Whereas we have Celestia being a data availability network that uses a technique called a DAS, which stands for data availability sampling. Let's jump into that. Data availability sampling, what the heck is it? Well, typically what you have are full nodes that have to store all of a blockchain's data and continuously they're verifying said data. However, with the DAS, data availability sampling technique, you have what are known as light nodes. So this is one of the key primitives here. And what they're doing is taking a very small subsection of the blockchain and verifying that data time after time after time. So they would do this on different parts of a block until it reaches a validity point of 99%. 
and the network achieves random sampling through the rearrangement of data into larger puzzles using a technique known as 2D Reed Solomon encoding. So these light nodes depicted as the mobile you can see on screen there, continuously query these full nodes for their data, randomly picking a few puzzle pieces. So using data availability sampling techniques, the Celestia light nodes actually download just a small portion of the data from a block. And as such, it could verify a block maybe of 100 megabytes in size with just 10 kilobytes of data. And so this highly efficient technique means that you could actually run a Celestia light node on your mobile and people are doing this right now. So if you think about that in terms of decentralization, typically with these monolithic blockchains, you have to have huge hardware requirements. Most people can't even afford to run the tech required. And then on the other end of the spectrum here, we have these light nodes you could run on your mobile, which makes this decentralized network massively scalable. This does mean that the more light nodes that Celestia has sampling, the bigger the block size that Celestia can have. And we think back to that first statement made, their ambition is for one gigabyte blocks, one billion light nodes and one million rollups. So these light nodes are key to the scalability of Celestia. On ETH, you have the rollups scaling the base layer, but on Celestia, you have the base layer scaling the rollups. If you can understand that statement, I really think you can then understand the key bull thesis for Celestia. Then the last piece of real technical information to go through here, this was formerly known as Quantum Gravity Bridge, but it's been renamed as the Blobstream. And this allows for the posting of data attestations from Celestia onto ETH. So as you can see from this, the easiest way to think about Blobstream is that essentially it is the bridge for data from Celestia to Ethereum. So in this way, there could be real symbiosis between Celestia and ETH, and this could be one of the scaling primitives to really help Ethereum scale quickly. So let's step away from some of the technical stuff here and think more around the token and how the Celestia token tier could have serious upside as it captures value from the network. So on screen here, we have the Celestia ecosystem. There are tons of different rollups trying to plug into Celestia for its DA, data availability, and its consensus. They believe in the modular thesis and they wanna get on board with this. There's some things such as dimension, eclipse. You may have seen these coming across your timeline. And as these come to market, what we could potentially see is that the tier token stakers. So if you've got Celestia tokens, they are a proof of stake network. You stake your tokens to help validate transactions and to secure the network. Well, if you're staking tier, what we are potentially going to see is something akin to Atom from last cycle, that is Cosmos, where those who stake their Atom, or in this case, stake their tier, could be getting airdrops from all the protocols building on top of the network. This is something to really think about here as this would be a key catalyst for price appreciation of the tier token if these airdrops really do start raining in. So the tier token, as I said, stakeable, it does get inflationary token rewards. So these are from the block rewards. But additional to this, stakers also get fees from the network proportional to their stake weight. The more you stake, the bigger your proportional rewards would be. The unstaking period though for TIA is 21 days. Another thing to think about. How else does TIA accrue some value? So paying for blob space, as it says from their docs, the rollups that want to use Celestia for its data availability, they have to pay fees to the network denominated in the TIA token. So again, a circular economy for TIA tokens, and that demand should grow obviously with the number of rollups launching. Additionally, new rollups that come to a network could choose to actually utilize the TIA token as their own token. It therefore could be used for paying the fees to Celestia and also as the gas token for the network. Again, this would be a very big use case and we'll have to see how this does develop. And as these rollups come to market here with Celestia to see if one of them does choose to use TIA as their native token, of course, that could be a major catalyst. And then final piece of alpha from listening to some of the many podcasts that the Celestia guys have done, there's likely to be a Celestia improvement proposal surrounding the burning of TIA sometime in the future. 
So if you want to stake some tier, you can then vote on governance proposals. Maybe this will be one that tickles your fancy as you could therefore vote on a fee burn akin to that of Ethereum mainnet. So quick overview of the token distribution for those who are unacquainted with this. So there was a large token airdrop. As you can see, public allocation here, 200 million tier tokens delivered via airdrop around the end of October 2023, the 31st of October. And as you can see, this is very flat until the cliff one year out. So there are no token unlocks coming for Celestia for a full 12 months from this date. And we're like a month and a half in so far. So this means that there is no inflation to this token until October of next year. Plus, as we've seen, a lot of developments are coming in the pipeline. So in my mind, there will be finite supply for the 12 month period new use cases and lots of developments coming for Celestia. Of course, not financial advice, but this does seem rather bullish in my mind. And I like those airdrop distributions that we've seen in crypto thus far and how those have played out. And you can see this on the chart here for the tier token. The initial airdrop investors got their tokens and they were selling. As soon as they start to run out of tokens, it takes a first leg up. And as people cotton on to the bullish developments around this, it seemingly takes another leg up here and is pushing on upwards. So we've looked at the technical spec around Celestia, how this will help scale millions of rollups into the future if their ambitions are met and how they use data availability sampling with these light nodes to make this process super efficient. So this one for sure is a bit of a bull thesis as we explain Celestia and its ecosystem. And we're very much looking forward to the developments that occur here throughout the year 2024 and beyond. If you did enjoy this one, make sure you smash a like on today's video, subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you again in the next one. Goodbye. Peace.